Welcome to Take Another Look, a current events and public affairs show bringing you news you can use. Property fraud, especially targeting elderly homeowners, is a growing problem in the United States. Each week it seems like a new scheme is uncovered. You hear a lot about quick claim deeds, reverse mortgages, and you may have questions about what happens to property once the property owner passes away. One of the offices effectively taking on property fraud is the office of Karen A. Yarbrough, the Cook County Recorder of Deeds. There are a variety of services provided by the office, all of which are aimed at preventing homeowners from being scammed. With us today is attorney Mario A. Reed, the Director of Public Information for the Cook County Recorder of Deeds office. And he's here to talk to us about preventing property fraud, as well as pointing out services available if you have been victimized. Mario, welcome to Take Another Look. Thanks for having me, Ashad. Certainly appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule to come out here and speak with us about a very important topic that, I, uh, unfortunately, it appears to be growing as the population ages, uh, property fraud, these right. scams that are aimed at uh, our elderly residents. So uh, tell us a little bit about the Cook County Recorder of Deeds office, the scope of work, and a little bit about what that office does. Absolutely. So thanks again for having us. Truly happy to be here. And the Cook County Recorder of Deeds office, which is currently under the auspices of Karen A. Yarbrough, our Cook County Recorder of Deeds, our office handles everything associated with property records. So anything that relates to property, whether it be the deed, you mentioned the quick claim deed, or a mortgage, a release of mortgage, any type of document which impacts property gets recorded or filed with our office. In addition to that, it's also a case where our office is responsible for ensuring accuracy of that public record. Mm -hmm. And that's what leads into property fraud, as you were mentioning. So we handle all issues associated with those fraudulent types of recordings. And that's really what property fraud is. The illegal recording of a document which should not be included in a property's chain of title. Now, Cook County is unique as it relates to the services provided for people who are uh, victims of property fraud. Is that correct? That is correct. So Cook County is the only county in the United States of America which has a fully active property fraud unit, which was created by legislation that came out of that county recorder's office. So there are other offices throughout the country which have investigators or individuals who kind of follow up on property fraud, but there's no other office in the country which has altered its own legislation so as to allow it to go actively after property fraud and prevent it from happening before it even is thought about. What's the most important thing that you would want to convey to a homeowner related to their their files and their filings and their deeds. I mean, it's more than just having a copy of it. Absolutely. Uh, it's more than having a, uh, an authorized signature on it. Tell, tell us a little bit about what uh, you would advise a homeowner to do to prevent it in the first place. Absolutely. So that's a great point. It's not a matter of having the paper because that paper is just that. It's just paper. The most important thing that a homeowner can and should do is make certain to check their chain of title. And that's something which they can do for free via our website of cookrecorder.com. All they need is their 14-digit property identification number, sometimes called that PIN number, in order to check their property records. It's important that they do that for two reasons. First and foremost, they want to make sure that they haven't already been scammed. And the only way that they can find out about that is they have to take a look at their chain of title. After they check their chain of title, it's important that they sign up for the free property fraud alert service, which ensures that if anything gets recorded against their property, we're going to notify them either via phone or email. And if that document should not be in their chain of title, we're going to get it removed for them all for free. So a lot of people, of course, you have certain files. The deed to your house is probably one of them. 
Absolutely. It's put in the corner or in the attic somewhere and you think basically you won't even need to worry about that until you get ready to sell the house. But you're actually saying that everyone who is a homeowner should go to the website and actually check the status of their home and their deed. Absolutely. And that's a great point because a lot of times people think once they have that original deed, they're covered and they can forget about it until they finish paying off the mortgage and then they wait for a document to show up from the mortgage company. Right. That's not how property records work. It's actually the furthest thing from how property records work. Mm. What a homeowner needs to do is check to make certain that someone else hasn't recorded a deed giving their house to that person in the last year, mm. two years or three years. How property fraud works is simple. Someone comes into our office with a deed that they doctored up on their computer at home and then they pay $50 to record that deed. They then wait for the homeowner to leave on vacation or be away from the home wow. for a while. They break into the house, change the locks, and that house now belongs to them on paper and physically in possession. So that's a little more than just being a squatter. That's Absolutely. actually going there and taking possession that of That is stealing someone's home. Mm -hmm. The recorder has a saying, and it is, it is easier to steal a home than it is to steal a car in the state of Illinois. Wow. And the reason why is because we have an open record system. So anyone can go into the recorder of deeds office at any time and claim any property as theirs. That's a sobering thought. It is. Uh, is. Is there any legislation or any thoughts about modifying that or changing that given the, you know, the technical advancements that we have right now and people being able to do whatever, anything and everything on their computers nowadays? So that's something in which our office is always vigilant of. And Karen Yarbrough's belief is that we should modify that process. However, it's not very likely to happen. And the reason why is because we want for commerce to flow. We want for people to easily be able to sell their house when they decide to. And because of that, that's the reason we have the system we have. And for the most part, it works. Ultimately, what we would be asking the legislature to do is change the entire system because there's one or two bad apples who are taking advantage of it. So the system isn't likely to change. However, Karen Yarbrough has instituted that property fraud process so as to put homeowners in a position to be informed and aware of what's going on with their property. So I'd like to go through a few terms that people may hear on the news uh, and uh, related to other reports that we may hear regarding real estate. Uh, tell us about zombie properties. What are they? So zombie properties are something which has really came to the forefront after the market crashed in 2008. And what a zombie property is, is a home or a property which is currently uninvested by any individual or entity. So an example is when a property gets foreclosed on, there was previously a homeowner who was in the house, they couldn't pay the mortgage or something came up that prompted them no longer, no longer pay. Yes. Well, when the bank originally forecloses on the property, what they're really doing is, is they're going into the court and asking a judge to foreclose on the property. Okay. That process on average takes about 18 months. So during that foreclosure process, when the homeowner finds out that they're being foreclosed on, oftentimes they'll walk away from the property and go find a new place to live. Mm -hmm. However, the house still technically belongs to them. But because they're not in the property, physically maintaining it, keeping the doors locked, right. cutting the grass, doing all of those functions, it now becomes a zombie property because the bank can't take possession of that property because mm. they haven't gotten the approval in the process. from the court. They haven't went through the process. So because the bank isn't taking ownership and the homeowner isn't taking ownership, it now is essentially a zombie property where mm. it's just up for grabs and oftentimes squatters or people who want to steal properties will move in because it's a very attractive property. Wow, that's interesting. Now, we mentioned a couple of times quick claim deeds. You hear that a lot of times on the uh, radio and people actually offering those services and want to help you and help you and help you and call us now and everything. Give us the information on that. Yes. So quick claim deeds. And oftentimes people get that one confused. It's quick as in I hate my job yeah. as opposed to quick. Okay. I run very fast. OK. So those quick claim deeds are a certain type of conveyance which is available. And what it means is, is that you are transferring ownership of a property to someone, but you're not guaranteeing any of what comes along with it. So it's the equivalent of someone who sells a car as is. Mm. If that engine blows up as soon as you drive it off the lot, it's, on you. it's yours. 
If by chance there was a $10,000 lien because work was done on it and the mechanic was never paid, it's the responsibility of whomever took it. It's the same exact concept as it relates to property. If by chance there are back taxes, if by chance there, there's a hole in the roof, if by chance there's a crack in the foundation, when someone conveys a property via a quit claim deed, they are saying you're taking this property with all of the headaches and all of the mess that comes along with it. Okay. Now, I've heard you speak previously about probate. It's something that many of us have, you know, it seems like big stars and entertainers deal with that, but it's really something that your regular citizen might have to encounter at a certain point in their lives as well, correct? Absolutely. That is a great, great point. It's something in which most people really don't have an understanding about. If someone owns a home in the state of Illinois, that home will have to go through the probate process unless the homeowner has a trust or a transfer on death instrument. A lot of times people think, hey, I own a home and I put my home in my will. I put in the will that I want my home to go to my eldest child mm -hmm. and they think they're okay. Everything's done. Not the case. It is the furthest thing from the case. Mm -hmm. If there is a home involved and all a person has is a will or if they don't have a will, the loved one has to go through the probate process every single time. There's no way around it. They always have to go through the probate process. Now, that's another initiative in which Karen Yarbrough has recently started offering. It's what's called property after death workshops. And what that property after death workshop does is it informs the public on how you can transfer your house, your car, and your bank account without having to have a will, without having to have a trust, without having to hire an attorney, and without your loved ones ever having to pay any legal fees whatsoever. Hmm. That's interesting. So how to how do you avoid, what are, what are the costs associated with avoiding having a probate problem? You mentioned what they need to fill out. Tell us uh, specifically, you said it's a transfer? Transfer on death instrument. Transfer on death instrument. How would one do that? How would one go about uh, making sure that that takes place? So it's very simple. Thanks to Karen Yarbrough, that form is available via our website of cookrecorder.com. All someone has to do is go right to that website, click on the forms tab, and then select transfer on death instrument. It is a free form that they can download, and then they simply fill out the details. They're going to fill out their name, their address, the legal description, all information which they likely have right at their fingertips already. Every single property owner. Every single property owner. It is completely free. And the nice thing is, it's not only available to residents here in Cook County, it's available to any homeowner in the state of Illinois. Okay. Another thing we may hear often, reverse mortgages, especially targeting the elderly. Yes. Reverse mortgages are another one of, another one of the things which have recently kind of gained traction a lot of times you see the advertisements with the fonts and right. on the prices, right? <laughs> and reverse mortgages are one of the most dangerous things that exist for property owners. And the reason why is because they're so enticing, but they are so terrible for the homeowner. How it works is as someone pays down their mortgage over time, it builds up equity. And once they reach a certain age, they can qualify for a loan product that's called a reverse mortgage. How it works is, is the financial institution is going to give the homeowner a loan against whatever the equity is that they have in their home. So if they've paid off their mortgage and their home is worth $100,000, mm. that reverse mortgage is now going to be a loan against the equity in the amount of $100,000. But instead of them just giving the $100,000 to the homeowner and allowing them to figure out how they want to spend it, they enter into an agreement where they ration that $100,000 off. Mm. So each okay. month, they're going to give them one hundred thousand, or I'm sorry, one thousand dollars, which is a means of kind of supplementing their income. Yes. Well, if they continue to live for another fifty or sixty months, then that means that sixty thousand dollars is owed. However, it's not just the sixty thousand. There's also that interest which gets tacked onto it, and the agreements typically state that when the homeowner dies or they're no longer able to live in the property, mm -hmm. the entire balance becomes due usually within 90 days. Mm. So if $60,000 was loaned out, about sixty-eight dollars to $70,000 is going to be due within 90 days or else the home goes to the financial institution. And that would impact typically the surviving spouse or 
those who inherited the property? Well, it wouldn't be the surviving spouse because it's going to be once whomever the last of the two okay. spouses is to okay. pass. But yes, it would impact the, the heirs, the children, the loved ones. But it's even a little bit more complicated than that because remember how I mentioned if they're unable to live in the home? Yes. Let's say that the couple or if it's just one person who owns it, they fall down the stairs and they break their head. Well, when you're up in age, you're going to need personal attention. So you leave and you go to a senior care center or you go yeah. live with kids for six months. That sometimes is all it takes for the bank to be able to take that house. So you finish getting tended to and cared for by your loved ones and you go to move back home, but you don't own the home any longer because it's went to the financial institution. So people taking out reverse mortgages. Uh, what, what is enticing them to do this? What are the benefits? Because it seems like a lot of people are taking that option. Absolutely. And the benefits do exist. One of the things that, because we talk about reverse mortgages in our property after death workshops, and our stance is if there's no one that you want your property to go to once you pass away, a reverse mortgage is a phenomenal option. Mm -hmm. Celebrate the final years of your life, travel, take the money and do whatever it is that you want to do with it. However, if there's someone that you want for your property to go to, it's not a good idea to do reverse mortgage because they're going to be hamstrung with whatever that loan is and they're going to be forced to scramble to try and figure out how they're going to pay back this exorbitant amount of money. I've also heard you talk in detail and in depth about property taxes and appeals. I even think you've done some workshops giving people helpful hints as it relates to that. Is there any guidance you can provide for our viewers related to that? Definitely. So property taxes are one of the kind of unique things about our system of property. And a lot of people don't quite understand that property taxes are done in such a way, which is an inexact science. When property taxes get assessed, the assessor goes out and measures a couple different homes in a particular subdivision or in a community and then takes the assessed value of those homes and applies it to all of the properties for that particular community or that particular area. So your neighbor's house might be close to yours, but there's a good chance that it isn't exactly like yours. But if it falls into kind of that cookie cutter format, you're going to get assessed the same property taxes based on that estimated property value as your neighbor. Well, your house could have had additions, your house could have had flood damage, your house could have had fire damage. All of those specifics are the reason why each and every year, unless you as a homeowner qualify for the senior freeze, you should appeal your property taxes twice. Because one, it's free to do, and two, it gives both the assessor and the Cook County Board of Review the opportunity to get your property taxes that are related to the property value correct. So each and every year when the second installment of your property tax bill gets sent out, you have 30 days to appeal your property taxes to the Cook County Assessor's Office. It is completely free to do. You can do it right at their website and it takes about five minutes. All you have to do is have your PIN number and you can appeal electronically. Mm. After you've appealed to the assessor, there's a second time that you can apply to, for an appeal. And that's with the Cook County Board of Review. Here in Dalton, the commissioner for the Cook County Board of Review is none other than Commissioner Larry Rogers, who is very near and dear to this community. He offers the opportunity for you to also appeal those property taxes online. Dalton does a phenomenal job of offering those tax appeal seminars during the summer when homeowners can come and fill out the paper form right. if they don't want to do it online. Absolutely. But every single year, unless a homeowner has the senior freeze, she or he should appeal the property taxes first to the assessor's office and then again to the board of review without fail. It's been incredibly informative. I just have one more question as we wrap up. Of course, we recently had an election day. Uh, there was some discussion regarding the Cook County Recorder of Deeds office and the Cook County Clerk's office. And I'm sure many people had questions. They may not have had a lot of details about it, but now you can provide some insight into uh, what was being discussed and what's being considered. Yes. So this past November, Cook County residents had the opportunity to vote as to whether or not the Cook County Clerk's Office, which is currently headed up by David Orr, should be merged with the Cook County Recorder of Deeds Office, which is currently led by Karen Yarbrough. 
So in a vote which included close to 2 million votes, approximately 65% of the public decided that yes, those two offices should merge. That merger is going to take effect on December 7th of 2020, and what it's going to consist of is the Recorder of Deeds office will no longer be an independently elected position. Whomever the clerk is, is going to be responsible for the clerk's office as well as the Recorder of Deeds office. Currently, David Orr is the clerk, but his term ends in 2018. So come 2018, there's going to be an election for that position, and whomever it is that gets that position is then going to be responsible not only for the clerk's office, which handles elections, which handles birth certificates, death certificates, and things like that. They're also going to be responsible for all property records throughout Cook County. All right. Well, thank you, Attorney Reed. Thank you. Uh, very good talking with you. Very informative, very enlightening. Again, tell uh, our viewers how they can get in contact with you if they want some assistance or some help. And of course, we'll be sponsoring uh, some events here where they can actually see you live and in person that you can give them the benefit of your expertise and knowledge. Excellent. So thanks again for having me. And you can get in contact with our office at area code 312 603 5050, which is our main informational line. You can also visit our website of cookrecorder.com. That website has hundreds of different resources that are available, and more specifically, dozens of forms that can save property owners thousands of dollars, all of which is free. So it's a great resource to have. But once again, that number is 312 603 5050. We'll love to answer any questions you have. If you feel as if though by chance you've been frauded or something's not right with your property records, please do not hesitate to reach out as we want to make certain to get everything right for you. All right. Thank you very much again. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to this edition of Take Another Look.